Wait a second. Cosine 120 is used as one half u. Shouldn't that be like sine 30 or something like that? Cosine 120 is one half. No, it's negative one half. No, cosine 120 is half. Oh, cosine 60. I should have write cosine 60. I'm an idiot. That's right. This is why this I wrote. Co this is R. And R is 60. Damn. R is 60. All right. That was okay. So that was the mistake. Hey, thank you for finding that mistake. All right. So that should have been 60 degree. Why? Because what is the angle of R? Angle of R is 60. Angle of R is not 120. Wow. And who found that what mistake? What an incriminating mistake. Who found that mistake? Me. No, it was me. It was me. So anyways, C is root 27. And I hope we can all agree on that. <laughs> okay, sure. Wow, well, that was good. You, you found the mistake. I'm, I'm, oh my God. Give me high five. All That's right. really so, nice. Greetings. There is a misconception among some students that the law of parallelism and law of cosine are two different things. I'll show you the law of parallelogram. And I am going to show you the law of cosine. We're going to help you understand the misconception on parallelogram and the law of cosine. Actually, they are the two are the both sides of the same coin. Of course they are. Okay, so let's give you an example and uh, we'll take it from there. And an example will uh, help you overcome all the misconceptions. Do all you right, think let's understand this sourdough bread. That's right. Can you think of any example we can use? All right. So let's say, uh, can you draw the coordinate axis oh, sure. with that? Uh, I'm writing. So we have, let's say, two vectors. Can you draw the fast vectors? So I'll do this, x and y. Draw the fast vector. So we have our first vector, A, which has a magnitude of 3, and let's say it is 30 degrees to the horizontal. Then we have B, which also has a magnitude of 3, and is aligned with the y-axis, or 90 degrees to the horizontal. Here B, and then I'm going to take the tail and put it on the top of the head, and I'm going to call it A. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And uh, since this is 30 degree, this is also 30 degree, is that right? Yup. And this B is 3 and this A is 3, is that right? Yup. Okay, now, what I'm going to do since I'm a, uh, I'm a uh, parallelogram guy, I'm going to draw a resultant, is that okay? Okay. So let's sure. put two vector, two vector, and of course, the, I'm going to call the R. R for resultant. Is that okay? Yeah. And I know this angle 30. Okay. But why? How? Okay, that's a long study. How? Huh? Okay, but if this is 30, right? Yep. If this is 30 and this is 3 and this is 3, right? Mm -hmm. And then there must be, this must be 90, right? Yep. And if this is 30 plus 90 is how much? 120. 120 then this look like an isosceles because this is three this is three if both sides are the same then it must be isosceles you can't then draw the 30 oh yeah then the angles has to add up to 180 so this must be 30. good job if this is 30 this must be 60. 60. so now since i'm a law of parallelogram guy so let's do the parallelogram so r squared is equal to a squared plus b squared plus 2ab cosine r Wow. I don't get scared by my R because, you know, that's how I do the angle to stand out. So R squared is equal to 3 squared plus 3 squared plus 2, 3, 3, cosine. Can you tell me what is the angle? 120. That is correct. And that R squared is 9 plus 9 plus 18 multiplied by half because mm. cosine 120 is half. Oh, yeah. So R squared is 27, therefore R is 5.2. So this, this hypotenuse or R, or you can call it the resultant, is 5.2. So 3 plus 3 is 5.2, that's what I got. We have B over here, and we've got the magnitude. So let's just put that as 3. And then we have A over here. So this... Oh, hey, 
I'm a law parallelogram guy, but I never draw the parallelogram. <gasps> How could you? So I'm gonna quickly draw the parallelogram be before I, you know, that's very bad. I'm a law parallelogram guy, but I did not draw the parallelogram. So can you finish it? All right, so here he's drawn A and B. So now you kind of take the vector A and clone it and put the tail on top of the head of B. And then to connect them all together, you just put another B. And then... The longer diagonal is the sum, and the shorter diagonal is the difference. Okay, so okay. Now this is what we call 5.2. 5.2. Now you see the parallelogram. And because of opposite interiors, if this is 90, this must be 92, making a 120 degree triangle over here. So let's redraw it like this. And here's our 120 degree angle. And here is our resultant. So, so. now all we need to do is use my formula, which is frankly much better than yours. Because my formula says c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus uh, 2ab cosine c. And it's even better because my c is bigger than your r. <laughs> okay. And what does your c represent? Is it angle or side? Well, if we call this point C and A and B, then this is angle C, which represents this 120 degree angle. I see. So now, plugging in, we get C squared equals 3 squared plus 3 squared minus 2, 3, 3 times cosine 120. So we get C squared equals 3 squared is 9, 3 squared is 9, minus 2 times 3 is 6 times 3 is 18, but cosine 120 is equal to minus 1 half. So we get c squared equals 9 plus 9 plus 9, which is 27. What? It gives us the same thing. So that's 5.2. All right, excellent. Now the x part of parallelogram and the log cosine will show us that they are basically the same thing. Wait a second. Cosine 120 is used as one half here. Shouldn't that be like sine 30 or something like that? Cosine 120 is one half. No, it's negative one half. No, cosine 120 is half. Oh, cosine 60. I should have write cosine 60. I'm an idiot. That's right. This is why this I wrote. Co this is R, and R is 60. Damn. R is 60. All right, that was okay. So that was the mistake. Hey. Thank you for finding that mistake. All right, so that should have been 60 degree. Why? Because what is the angle of R? Angle of R is 60. Angle of R is not 120. Wow. And who found that mistake? What an incriminating mistake. Who found that mistake? Me. No, it was me. It was me. So anyways, C is root 27. And I hope we can all agree on that. <laughs> okay, sure. Well, that was good. You, you found the mistake. I'm, I'm, oh my God. Give me high five. All That's right. really so, nice. Now, let's see why these actually work. So, we have r squared equals a squared plus b squared plus 2ab cosine so a r. just is a number. Yeah. And c squared equals, wait, no, I forgot one to put it. And c squared is a squared plus b squared plus, mm -mm. Um, or no, minus 2ab cosine c. Now, uh, what is the difference between r and c? That r plus c is equal to 180. And how would I know that? Well, according to his parallelogram method, so here's the parallelogram formed by those four vectors. We know this is 120, and this is 120, and since this all of the angles in there add up to 360, this is 60, and this is 60 as well. So here is our angle R, and here is our angle C, and because they're on the same side of the parallelogram, they are supplementary. 
In other words, they both add up to 180. And the thongo is o that when two angles are supplementary, let's say we have a and b and they are supplementary, cosine a will be equal to minus cosine b, even though strangely, sine a is equal to sine b. But we're not working with sine right now. We're work working with cosine. So that means cosine a and negative cosine b. So co cosine c and negative cosine r. And just like that, r and c are the same thing. Therefore, law of parallelogram and the law of cosines are the same. So why don't we put them together? Since they're same. All right. Put them together. They are the same. Sourdough bread. <laughs>